Tosui's Vinegar. This is the 99th story from the Zen Flesh Zen Bones. Written by Paul Reps. From the Zen Flesh Zen Bones. Tosui's Vinegar. Tosui was a Zen master who left the formalism of temples to live under a bridge with beggars. Tosui is a Zen master. When he says the Zen master is a person, who, who was trained inside a temple, inside a monastery, inside an ashram, inside a church, inside a masjid. They are all training to make you good, to make you understand how to connect to God, how to connect with the nature, how to make your body disciplined. No, it's not uh, bad about it. But what is taught in the, in the church in the Middle East cannot be applied in India. It all depends upon the circumstances. So what you learn in India, you cannot apply it in America. What you learn in the Middle East, you cannot apply in other parts. But you can apply. But pro provided you become conscious and you practice that and you melt with the culture or Sanskrit of that particular country, then it is very effective. Otherwise, you become a slave and you die like a slave. Hence. Tosi was a Zen master who left the formalism of temples to live under a bridge with beggars. He, once you finish your studies, you have to leave. Like how the children come to the school from morning to evening, they leave the school to go back to the to their houses. And at present, the houses have become like beggars' home. To live under a bridge with beggars. Because who are the beggars? The beggars are the college professors, the lecturers, the teachers, the doctors. The engineers, all those bookish knowledge people who have not put things into practical knowledge, the factory owners, including the political leaders, the Swamiji's like us, the, uh, the Guruji's, if they have not worked like a karma yogi morning till evening, sweat it out, work and prove that they can roll like a thousand man warrior, only then they have the right to come inside the temple and then give a lecture or train the other people. And that is not possible. Then what Tosu did was he left the temple to, to live under a bridge with beggars. Under the bridge means under the bridge means like the concrete jungles or the big big schools and colleges and universities and the hospitals and the uh, professional colleges and the big big factories. There you can see a lot of beggars working for salary. And it's nothing wrong. Why he went to be with the beggars? Because those who decided, whatever I studied, I have to find out whether I can put it in practical terms and make the people also understand. Yes, work with the beggars. Beggars are, who are the beggars? Who are begging, begging for a salary, begging for, the, for a job, begging for the promotions, begging for a degree, begging for a marks card. To find out whether after begging, whether when they go back to the home, whether they make the house also a beggar's place. Like the children in the school, when we don't give them homework, the parents come and fight, telling give them homework. Then what are you going to teach? You have nothing to teach. Don't you have your Sanskrit to teach? Don't you have your love to give them? Don't you have the time to spend? Your time is medicine. Sitting next to the child, sitting next to your parents, sitting next to wife and husband for hours together itself is meditative. Meditative is medicine. A love blooms. A love can move mountains and oceans of problems. They say love moves on mountains and oceans. Hence, Tosu decided that he has to go under the bridge with the beggars to stay with the beggars. And when he stay with the beggars, whatever is practiced there, he has to make sure that he teaches the people and practice with the people what is pranayama. How to do your warming up and stretching before you go to the field to do any work. And after you feel finish the work, you have to come back and do the stretching. All the factories and companies have missed that one. They have not missed it. They are cunning. They were cunning. I am asking all the factories and the companies and the schools and colleges. There should be warming up and stretching exercise before the children start the school and the college or the people start the work. And after they finish the work, again the warming stretching exercise is a must. Like how the Japanese are given the Ofuro, hot and cold water bath. For all the people, for every every pot, 
every prefecture has got a nofuro. People can go there and take hot water and cold water bath and it gives whole body a massage. People are healthy, you do not go. When people keep going to the hospitals and there are more hospitals in a place, you can understand that country will fail very fast. Very fast. If you just if you want to invest money in a, in a city, you can just walk around the city and you find more hospitals. You know people are weak. They can be purchased. Invest the money there, you can get double the money back. My Japanese friend told me that. And if you go in, the, in a city and you find more gymnasiums and less hospitals, then you don't invest because people are strong. Gymnasiums, you know, that there's a beautiful garden, vegetable garden, medicinal plants growing, people are healthy walking in the park, doing things, cleaning up the road. They themselves aware that inside and outside, inside the house when they clean, they should clean outside the house. Then that place is very beautiful. While he was getting very old, a friend helped him to earn his living without begging. He showed Tosu how to collect rice and manufacture vinegar from it and Tosu did this until he passed away. The friend has taught him to stop teaching the people more. But now be practical. Try to find out how you can make your own, inside your own house, how do you can use your own energy to roar like a thousand man warrior. How you can find out that inside your own house, what vegetables you brought from the village, from the shop, you, that seed, you grow a vegetable garden, you grow a medicinal garden, you extract oil from those vegetables and you apply it on your body. Like Dr. Hegde was telling, which, coconut oil is very, 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 look at the Kerala girls. They always put a lot of oil. They don't re remove the oil by using um, uh, shampoo. And the Kerala people do not have any skin disease because they use a lot of oil, coconut oil it seems. Look at the Tamil Nadu girls, they apply turmeric powder on their feet, on their face and they look very young and healthy it seems. See, even now what Dr. Hegde told here is now been uh, discussed, practiced in the western countries now, in America a lot about the turmeric powder, about the coconut oil. So that is what his friend told him that how to collect the rice and manufacture vinegar from it. You are making rice, but you have not thought about manufacturing vinegar from it. <laughs> Penetrating deeper into the same subject, what you have. That means the, the friend is taught, now you go back home and then you make sure that you collect the rainwater harvesting. Rainwater and converting rainwater harvesting, blackwater harvesting, greywater harvesting. Drip, uh, drip irrigation, check dams. From one, you lead to many, 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 many. Your own, own body, when you do it, you can make other people follow it up. Like in, like the Japanese mothers never teach the children. They just do it and children look at them and they follow it up. When you teach them by force, they become a slave, they fall sick very fast. And you are spending a lot of money on your medicines. Those who how to collect rice and manufacture vinegar from it and those who did this until he passed away. While those who was making vinegar, one of the beggars gave him a picture of the Buddha. Those who hang it on the wall of its hut and put a sign beside it. You have given us a picture of the Buddha, one of the beggars, it means one of the professors, one of the lecturers, one of the swamis, one of the professional colleges, one of the politicians. They have given him a holy book picture of the Buddha and he knows what they given is materialistic thing without they putting it into practice. Those who hung it on the wall of his hut and put a sign beside it. The sign read, Mr. Amida Buddha, this little room is quite narrow. I can let you remain as a transient, but don't think I'm asking you to help me to reborn your paradise. So he said, whatever you have brought it is temporary so he put a sign whoever brings your borrowed knowledge <laughs> my room is so narrow you cannot be here you can should be only as a transient temporary and you can keep moving but don't think i'm asking you to help me to be reborn in your paradise i'm not asking you because i allowed you to be here i'm not begging you to help me to be reborn again to be reborn again in this paradise of 
materialistic wealth in this paradise of borrowed knowledge. <laughs> because you came, I allowed you. That is the thinking. Please go back to your houses from your collection of the rainwater, converting into drip irrigation to rainwater harvesting, to the black water harvesting, to the grey water harvesting, to the check dams. You have created the groundwater is become recharged and there's enough water in all the borewells. Yes, it's a lot of water. Don't believe what people are and Swamiji's and Guruji's and all are telling there won't be water, there won't be water. Like they're going to tell there won't be sunlight after some years. <laughs> yes, there, there is no sunlight basically. Yes, what they're telling is truth because many people are not seeing the sun at all. Early morning they enter the concrete building at night. And they come out, they, they do not know what is sunlight, they do not know what is stars, no, no, I was, I was in sky. When I was in Japan, I was with the Goldman Sachs and every time when I come back, I hardly see because it's uh, all weather conditions, uh, rooms, uh, buildings. When I come back, when I, come, when I get out, sometimes I see the snow, but I hardly have seen the sunlight and the sky, <laughs> yes. And what will happen to such kind of people? You'll have, you have to bring Corona and other things. And then from the uh, rainwater harvesting, what you collected, you know, there's enough wealth, powerful. That is how you become a, you can roll like a thousand men warrior. And there you find the roar of a thousand men warrior. And then you see the sunlight and you convert the sunlight by doing Surya Namaskar, opening up the body. And all your diseases vanishes. Yes, it's beautiful, very powerful, yes. And your heart be the heart. And you convert sunlight into solar, enough light. You, ro you were able to roll like a thousand men warrior. And when you know your Sanskriti, and you know how to cleanse your internal things, it becomes pranima. <laughs> you have done it. You control the breath. Hold it. You have done it. <laughs> and now they are talking about castor oil. And you have a cataract. Don't do not go to the glucoma. Don't go to the hospital. Just have, apply cataract oil, castor oil, oil onto your eye, uh, top of the eyelids and down. In Karnataka, we put directly into the eyes. <laughs> you say, you have cancer, apply it on the stomach, stomach ulcers, stomach problems, brain cancers, you can use um, castor oil, try it. Dr. Hegde is talking about uh, coconut oil, apply coconut oil, is very good. <laughs> but above all that, spend time with the children, spend time with the wife and children, yes. Don't force them for the homework, don't force them to go out, be with them, hold hand, taking bath together, eating the family, sit together, eat together, place together, grows together. That is the most beautiful part of every life. And that strengthens you, keeps you away from diseases. And they won't be any stress. Help me to be reborn. No, don't, I am not asking you to help me to be reborn in your paradise. Which paradise? Materialistic world paradise.